You're listening to the Savvy Social Podcast, the show for budding entrepreneurs who want to understand the how and the why of social media marketing. I'm your host, Andrea Jones. Let's get started. From creating an Insta-famous dog account to building out a subscription photography company, today's guest is an expert at going with the flow. Hey, welcome to episode number 41 of the Savvy Social Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Social Report, which is the world's most complete social media management tool and my tool of choice when it comes to having everything in one place for social media management. Try them out for free for 30 days by going to socialreport.com or you can click the link in the show notes. Now today's guest is Elle Druin. She is a product stylist, brand photographer, and business mentor to creative entrepreneurs. After several years working as the director of marketing and digital strategy for an e-commerce business, Elle launched her own business to focus on helping online business owners build brands that are profitable and pretty. She's the creator of the Styled Stock Society, a stylish stock photography membership, and she teaches other women how to build sustainable business by creating recurring revenue streams. Now, she's also the human behind the popular Instagram account, Mochi and the City. So Elle's dog, Mochi, is a four-year-old multi-poo model who has been featured in places like Entrepreneur, Refinery29, The Today Show. She has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Yeah, Insta famous. And in today's episode, we're going to talk about how Elle got to where she is and the um, evolving that happened along the way and how she pivots with each step, which I find really interesting. Um, she basically listen to the feedback of her audience and kept on going. So let's dive in to the interview. Hi Elle, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk to you because, well, just for selfish reasons, I want to learn about your story and how you all got started. Um, so let's start from the beginning. And I'll, I'll say the caveat is I found you through Mochi's account. Um, I have an Instagram account for my dog, and but he's not as Insta famous <laughs> as Mochi. And so um, tell me about um, how you got started, which account started first, yours or your dog's, and then and the growth from there. Okay, first of all, I had no idea that you found me through my dog's account, which is amazing. Um, and second of all, <laughs> she actually came after my, my account. So I started my account, I don't know, a million years ago, just as like a personal account that eventually kind of transitioned into my business and personal brand. But when we brought Mochi home, let's see, four and a half years ago or so now, I started an account just for her because I didn't want my account to be full of dog photos. I didn't want to be that like annoying person who only posts photos of their dog. So I gave her her own account thinking that like maybe my friends or my family would follow it. Um, and very quickly her following surpassed mine. So that's, that's fun. <laughs> I mean, but she is really cute. <laughs> She's really, really cute. So once you started seeing things pick up with her account, when was that turning point for you? Like this could be monetized. So honestly, for the first year or so, I didn't really spend that much time on her account. I would just post photos whenever I took a cute one, but I didn't really think about it in terms of like, you know, this is like a serious business or like even even not even a hobby at that point it was just like I take pictures of my dogs and I share them on the internet um, but about a year after I started her account she had grown to 10,000 followers totally organically and we had brands um, kind of on a regular basis reach out to us asking if they could send us their products if um, they could do sponsored posts and things like that. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe I could be more serious about her account. So I kind of just took a look at the posts that had done well um, and tried to figure out like what it was that people were actually following her for. Um, and I think the posts that really did the best are the ones that people connected to on a human level, which sort of weird because she's a dog, but I've given her this like human personality. I like, honestly, Moshi is really like me in little dog form. Um, so she likes wine and fashion and travel and all the things that kind of I was doing in my real life were the things that people were connecting to because 
all the people that fo were following her, even if a lot of them were other people with pet accounts, the people behind those pet accounts are actually real people too. So I think really figuring out like what it is that people were interested in seeing from a content perspective and then just focusing on those things um, really made a difference in terms of her growth. We went from about 10, 15,000 followers to 30,000 in two months. And mm -hmm. that's pretty much when her account took off and also when I quit my day job. Wow. So when you quit your day job was when you started working like seriously on Mochi's account. So that was that like the catalyst? It sort of was. So when, so November of 2015, I actually wrote a blog post um, that was 10 ways to grow your Instagram. And it was basically how I grew her Instagram from zero to 15,000 followers. And I wrote the post mainly because I think at the time there are a lot of other people. Um, I hadn't officially started my business yet. I just started a blog sharing marketing tips. I had worked in marketing um, before I started my own business. But one of the things that I was seeing um, from a lot of business owners and brands that I came across were that, you know, it's kind of you have to pay to play or you have to hire influencers. You have to do all these things if you really want to grow account on Instagram. And I was like, well, I grew to 15,000 followers without spending a dime. Like all I did was post content that people wanted to see and connect with people who are on Instagram who wanted to see that content. So um, I just shared 10 tips in a blog post that ended up getting a lot of traction on Pinterest. And that's actually the thing that I think has made one of the biggest differences like behind the scenes um, for my business because it just, it continues to be my most popular blog post today. And it's you know like four years later. And I think a lot of the strategies that I shared in that are still really applicable to Instagram. Um, but they really, it was a combination of writing that post, having it go viral, and then having a lot of people who find Mochi, um, then find me mm -hmm. that all happened at the same time. So, yeah, yeah. And you, um, when you started your business, you were in social media, right? Yeah. Well, so I was the director of digital marketing for an e-commerce business. Okay. Okay. So you have Mochi's account and then you had your marketing blog. How did that transform into what you have today? So it kind of evolved over time. When I first started my business, I originally started consulting. I actually had a lot of Mochi's followers reach out asking for help um, to grow their following. And some of them were just people with dogs who wanted their dogs to be famous. And some of them were uh, pet related businesses who wanted to get traction on Instagram as well. And so I did a couple of things. I started consulting. Um, I started doing one-on-one -on -one um, Instagram strategy sessions with people who reached out and um, either found me on Instagram, found Mochi on Instagram, found me through my blog. And I also created an online course called Celebrity Pet Boot Camp to help other people who wanted their pets to be famous on Instagram. And that's kind of how my business started. And I really was just kind of trying to do anything that people would pay me money for, to be totally honest, in the beginning. And I had experience in digital marketing, but I didn't really set out to, to do anything specifically other than help people and figure out what kind of help that they wanted. Um, I realized pretty quickly that I didn't want to do consulting full time because I just really am not the type of person who loves to talk to people all day long. Um, it's, it's very draining as an introvert. And I quickly realized that this is not a sustainable way for me to personally run my business. And on the flip side, I also while I enjoyed the online courses from like a scalability standpoint, and I really did love working with some of my students, I just felt like at the time, Instagram was changing every five seconds. And so it wasn't like I created this course that could be evergreen, that I could just focus on marketing over and over again. I was constantly having to update every time you know, Instagram came up with a new thing or the algorithm changed or now we have Instagram stories. And it was just a constant struggle to stay on top of all the changes that were happening with Instagram at the time. And that's not really what I wanted to do in my business either. So um, in thinking about what people were actually coming to me for in terms of help, um, I actually went through all of my email opt-ins and tried to figure out, okay, what when people are coming to my website, what are they doing? What's their next step? And I was kind of surprised to see that in the span of two months, over a thousand people had downloaded the set of free stock photos that I had. 
And at the time I wasn't a photographer, I had just taken some extra photos and used them as a lead magnet. And I really didn't think about them so strategically at the time, but in going through like all my numbers and analytics and I like, I actually majored in finance and went to math camp and I'm like a total numbers nerd um, beneath everything. So I was like, okay, I'm like, what are these numbers telling me? And honestly, I think that people were coming to me for like Instagram or social media tips and advice and strategies. And one of the things that were actually holding people back and implementing those strategies was a lack of visual content. So they just didn't have the photos to post on Instagram because they weren't a photographer and they didn't want to take time to take photos or they didn't know like what photos they should even be posting. Um, so having the set of free stock photos was just an easy way for people to like have something to show up with. Um, so I created the Stock Stock Society, which is a stock photography membership for women entrepreneurs in June of 2016. Um, and at the time, I thought that this would just be another revenue stream that I would have um, in addition to my courses and consulting and just a way for me to not spend all my time doing one of any of the things. Um, and it kind of quickly took off from there. Um, I actually went full-time into styling and photography at the beginning of 2017. And that's pretty much what I've been doing since then. Oh, that's so fun. I love to hear the progression of really creating a business that um, suits your own personality and suits what you want to get out of life. I think that's so important. And sometimes we forget that when we look at the shiny objects that's other people's businesses or other people's way that they do things. Um, sometimes you got to, you know, dig into your own personality, your own preferences and build out your life from there. So I really like that. Um, so I know specifically for things like the Styled Stock Society, you have kind of its own Instagram account and that sort of thing. Um, what are some of the successes that you've had with social media in um, building that community and getting awareness on um, that sort of membership product? So I think for us, it's been Instagram in particular and Pinterest as well. Um, but Instagram has been really um, a tool that we've used to help people preview what's in the membership because, you know, if people are investing in photos, I think they should be able to see what it is that they're investing in. And, you know, we don't really do like a free trial or anything like that, but Instagram is really a way for people to see, you know, what's behind the scenes. And stories also, I think, have been really great in connecting people with people on a more personal level and actually showing what's behind the scenes, like when we're doing a photo shoot. Um, you know, what our lighting setup is like. And it's also a way for us to do like quick surveys and polls and ask people, you know, if we're thinking, okay, maybe we're going to do a shoot with these colors or those colors, which ones do you want to see more of um, just to keep our uh, eye on what people want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So what goes into that decision-making process? Um, and I'm asking, cause I already know, like you send out surveys and that sort of thing, but can you um, share for the audience members who don't know um, how you kind of create a, the, the curated content that's inside of the society? Yeah. So our members pretty much decide everything that goes into it. Um, we survey our members in a three main ways. So the first way is through our semi-annual surveys. We do a big survey to everyone in our audience in June and at the end of the year, asking them, you know, what their business is like, how are they using stock photos, what are their brand colors, do they want, you know, more style desktops or more lifestyle photos or more seasonal photos, do we want photos with people, without people, um, all sorts of questions to get a sense of what people really want. And then also, anytime someone joins the Style Stock Society, um, one of the first things that we do in our welcome sequence is literally ask them, like, okay, you've been a member for a couple weeks now. I hope you're enjoying it. If there's anything in the library that you wish were there that's not already, let us know what it is. And we'll let you know if it's something that's you know on our pipeline or we'll put it on our list of things that we can potentially add later in the year. So it really is our members who drive all of our content and give us the creative inspiration for everything we do. 
Yes. And I love that because I remember, I think I joined about a year ago and I've been like in and out, um, which is great because like you can go in when you need it. Right. Um, And so I remember when I joined, there wasn't that many like podcasting related photos. And now there's a ton and it makes me so happy (laughs) because a lot of my clients are podcast related and I have a podcast. So I use it for my own um, posts and that sort of thing. And so uh, I feel like as a member, I get to be like, hey, I wish there could be more of this and then there magically is and it's great <laughs> so I love that um so tell us what's coming up for the styled sock society and um I noticed recently I think you announced that you kind of expanded your team so can you talk a little bit about that process as well yeah so our biggest focus right now is expanding the library and We went from adding photos once a month to adding twice a month, which obviously adds a lot more photos on a a regular basis. And to keep up with that, I've also started hiring contributing photographers. So for the first two and a half years or so of the membership, I was the one who was styling and shooting and editing all of the photos. Um, And now we're at the point where I am bringing on some people. um, Specifically, I'm looking for and I've been hiring photographers who can bring something different to the table. Cause I think that, you know, as much as I will try something new or get different inspiration, like anything that's coming from me and my point of view is going to kind of come from me and my point of view. Whereas um, other photographers um, who maybe have different experiences or different studio setups or, you know, um, access to different things um, can bring something different to the table. So for example, one of our new contributing photographers lives in Thailand, which I love because we always get questions um, from people who are like, can you add more beach photos or vacation photos or photos of, you know, uh, water, like the ocean and things like that. I'm like, okay, well, I live in New York City. So if you would like more photos of the beach, you can pay for my beach vacation, (laughs) which I will then have to work on (laughs) in order to take those photos. And I've actually done that before. I've spent my vacation taking photos of palm trees because I knew that was the only time that I was going to have access to palm trees. But it's not really ideal. So having someone who actually lives on an island where there's palm trees and can take photos of them on a regular basis is really great. So I'm excited because we'll have a lot of really great summer content um, that doesn't actually require me going (laughs) somewhere to shoot it. Um, So things like that. And I just hired another contributor who is a mother and that's something that has been lacking from the membership as well. We have no photos that relate to motherhood. Um, I am a dog mom, not a human mom, and I don't really have plans to be a human mom. So um, that's just not something that has been a part of my life or a part of the library, but um, it is something that I am able to bring to the membership through our contributors. Yeah. Oh, I'm a dog mom too. So I'm, I'm fine with that dog mom life. <laughs> um, but I think it's very interesting how your business has evolved over time. And it feels almost like you're just, um, it's, it's very, it's been very, very organic and natural for you to kind of take these next steps into, okay, let's look at what's working. This is what's working. Let's try that and expand upon that. And let's have um, like kind of the user data feed the decisions that you make, which I think is a really smart move as a business person. Um, So what's next? Like now that you've expanded um, Styled Stock Society to include more photographers, um, what's the next big thing that's coming down the pipeline? So the next thing is kind of related to the Style Stock Society, but not exactly. So one of the things that I changed about my business um, recently, as of the end of 2018, um, I actually, I was on the side of the Style Stock Society also working with individual clients for brand photography. Um, So that took up a good amount of my time, sort of my, I had my dog's business, the Style Talk Society and then my photography business, like one-on-one clients. Um, And I kind of moved on from that part of my business. Um, Just from a photography perspective, my goal is to help as many people as possible and doing that one-on-one isn't really scalable. So um, just focusing on the membership and doing 
what I can to bring as much value um, to the South Stock Society is kind of the main focus in terms of photography and styling moving forward. I just want to be able to help as many people as possible. Um, and so sort of in my new free time, if you will, <laughs> I don't really have free time because I, I tend to fill it with business opportunities. Um, but one of the things that I sort of felt a shift um, kind of internally last year was really um, wanting to get back to helping people in a non-photography part of business. Mm -hmm. um, so I had been getting a lot of questions from people over the past couple of years about like starting a stock photography membership um, mm -hmm. or just starting any sort of membership site um, and growing a subscription business and in terms of just like people who were ready to scale from one-on-one -on -one services and maybe I think for a while like online courses was just like a really popular thing like everyone was doing it I did it um, <laughs> probably did it I don't know <laughs> like just like I felt like it was the thing like everyone was doing and um, it, you know I, I kind of talked about how it wasn't really for me and part of that was just the nature of the course that I created it wasn't particularly evergreen friendly um, but creating a subscription-based business has really made a huge impact on not just my business, but my life in terms of the way that I can streamline everything that I'm doing um, and just bring in recurring, re recurring revenue on a regular basis. So um, I actually started working with some clients one-on-one -on -one to help them create, launch, and grow their own membership sites. Um, and I am launching some new resources this year to sort of continue down that path and help people um, with their own subscription businesses. Ooh, that's so much fun. I, um, so I have a membership site as well. And so I understand the pains and sufferings and also the absolute rewards of having that sort of system in place. Um, I was on the course route too. And being that I'm in social media, you're right, it always changes. So for me, having the membership model made sense because I can change with it. Um, the new content, I always have content that I can add because it's always changing. So that's great. Um, so I really like that you're helping people with that model. Um, and you mentioned earlier about Pinterest. So with some of these newer um, opportunities, and even with the Styled Stock Society, what are some of the strategies that you use on a platform like Pinterest to um, grow kind of awareness around the things that you're working on? A lot of it is, again, that like just the visual aspect of the Styled Stock Society really lends itself to platforms like Pinterest because eye-catching visuals are one of the things that people really like seeing on Pinterest. So seeing samples of our photos, um, really for the past three years, um, the main way that we've grown our email list has been through free stock photos. Um, so there's an initial set of free stock photos and we also give new free stock photos to our subscribers every single month. And that's something that we promote heavily on Pinterest. And when I say promote heavily, I mean not like paid promotions. Like I'm not doing promoted pins. I'm just literally sharing the free stock photos, which um, is something that I like, I've seen in my business and I think for some of my clients as well who have just started growing their email lists um, to launch their stock photography sites that people love free stock photos. So that has just been a, a great way to get in front of new people and new audiences. Yeah, oh, I love that. So you're giving away value, giving them a little sample of what they can see when they join the Style Stock Society and using platforms that um, cater to that, like Instagram and Pinterest to grow things. Love, love, love it. Um, so before we wrap up here, um, any final pieces of advice for um, maybe new businesses out there who are looking to um, start a uh, creating visual content, what's the first thing that they should do? My, honestly, my biggest piece of advice is to don't overthink it. Like it's more important to show up than to make your feed look perfect or to have the perfect photo. Um, Cause honestly, that's like not a thing. Like I think sometimes we get so caught up in like, this has to look a certain way. And honestly, it doesn't. The thing that matters the most is you and your voice and the fact that you actually showed up. Mm -hmm. So don't let a lack of perfect visuals hold you back from showing up. 
Uh, I love that. I love that because sometimes we have to get started to figure out what we like, what we don't like, what works and what doesn't work and all of the, those things in between. Um, thanks so much, Al. So how can we find you online? What's the best place to kind of be in your world? So uh, I am on line at ldruin.com um, and everywhere on social media at ldruin. It's E-L-L-E-D-R-O-U-I-N. And uh, Styled Stock Society is at Styled Stock Society on Instagram and styledstocksociety.com. And Perfect. if you're into dogs, <laughs> you can follow my dog, Mochi. She's at Mochi and the city. Yes. Mochi's account, like seriously jealous of her closet. Just saying. <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> um, so I'll put all of those links in the show notes. And I'll also put my link to Styled Sock Society as well. Highly recommend it. Um, and my link is an affiliate link, but it's the same. it goes to the same place. If you want to just go to the website, that works too. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Savvy Social Podcast. For links and everything we talked about, please check out the show notes by visiting SavvySocialPodcast.com. And don't be afraid to continue the conversation. I'd love to have you inside of the Facebook group. You can search for us on Facebook or simply go to SavvySocialCrew.com. See you there. Bye for now.